Mm, it's a beach. It's a beach. Mm-hmm. Describe this beach for me. Um, the water is aquamarine. It's very light. It's like white. The beach, the sand is white. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. Peaceful. And it just goes forever. It's just empty. Mm-hmm. Just me. What else do you see on this beach? Look around. Um, trees, palm trees. Mm-hmm. Ooh, rocks. Mm-hmm. Look out at the ocean mm. and tell me if there's anything out there, anything of interest to you. No, I don't see them, but I hear the dolphins. Mm-hmm. So I'd like for you to go ahead and call the dolphins towards you. Allow those dolphins to get close. And as those dolphins get close, I'd like for you to begin walking into the water. Imagine yourself as you walk into the water. And mm-hmm. tell me when the dolphins arrive. Uh, they wanted to come play. Mm-hmm. So go ahead and begin your descent into the water, and you'll be able to breathe and feel at ease. And as you do this, I'll adjust your mind. So go ahead and tell me what you're seeing, what you're feeling. What's happening there? So I just, yeah, I'm just holding on to the fins and they're just, like I could instantly breathe in the water. Mm -hmm. How many dolphins do you see? Uh, Three. Three. So I'd like for you to connect telepathically with these dolphins and tell me what they're saying to you. (laughs) <laughs> They're saying they need more time. We need more time to play. Mm-hmm. So go ahead and play with them. Tell me what kind of what kind of play are you doing with them? Um, they're just taking me through the water. Mm-hmm. But I think it was more in 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 a sense of making the time to play, mm-hmm. relaxing, not not being so caught up. Just going, being, just being. Mm -hmm. So let's find out where the dolphins would like to take you today. Ask them to guide you. They took me to an island. All right. Tell me what's there. I just, um, they, they, it's Atlantis, I guess, Mm -hmm. is what they say. I just Mm -hmm. got to hear all right, so describe what it looks like. It's just lush and beautiful. Um, it has like a pyramid or a monument. And this, like, I just, yeah, I just see a big, like, stone, limestone pyramid. Mm hmm. And it feels so peaceful. Mm hmm. Are you on the island now? Or are you still in the water? I'm in the water. Mm-hmm. Look around. What else do you see there? I see boats. People fishing. Mm-hmm. What do these boats look like? Are they... They just almost look like a simple, like, what a paper boat would look like if you just made a paper sailboat. They're mm-hmm. just really simple. And what do the people look like on these boats? They're dressed in white. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. And they're just casting their nets, but it's more magical. It's not... It's like it sparkles. Mm-hmm. The water sparkles? No, the net sparkles. Hmm. The net's shimmering. I think it attracts the fish. Mm-hmm. That's funny. They said that it changes the vibration. It does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What makes these nets sparkle? Energy. Mm-hmm. And love. What else do you see there? I see kids playing. 
just being free, like frolicking in the water. Not so, it's not stringent, it's not um, regimented. Mm -hmm. It's more free play and learn through living. I think they have class time, but they don't, it's different. It's like they get downloads, they get yeah, but they're much more time to roam and to explore. Mm -hmm. I see them exploring. What are they exploring now? What do you see? Like shells on the beach and just like the little crabs, you know, they go down in the sand. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. What else is there? I feel like there's a group of people waiting for me to come out of the water. All right. So go ahead and come out of the water, and as you do, I'd like for you to focus on yourself and tell me what you look like as you come out of that water. What does your body look like? Um, it's slender, and I'm a female. Mm -hmm. I feel like almost like, like, uh, like I want to say in a toga of sorts, but that's wrapped with like a sash about. Mm-hmm. But it's all white. Everything's in white. And um, my hair is all done up, like, in an up, I don't know, it's funny. Mm -hmm. Is it decorative? Very decorative. Mm -hmm. They've been waiting for me. What is your role? What do you do there? Um, they said I'm a priestess. Mm -hmm. What name do you go by? Sarah. Mm hmm When I say the name Sarah, does that resonate with you? It feels distant. Mm hmm So let's find out why they're waiting for you. What's the occasion? They learn a lot from me. And not like I I don't teach them, I just they like, talk to them. Mm -hmm. They like just to talk to me and hear about what I've done or my experiences. So what are you talking about today? Kindness. Mm -hmm. Fill me in on your lessons. Learning to not take everything so personally, that everybody has their own things going on, and that we should always radiate kindness, listen to their story, be compassionate, but not take it. Uh, detached compassion. Mm -hmm. It's an important lesson. I've mm -hmm. learned it many times. Mm -hmm. So how do they respond to you when you talk with them? They smile. They just, just seem to glow and be happy. How many are you with? <laughs> You're 12. Mm -hmm. Are these older people or younger? What's, what's the age range? They feel younger, but it's a mixture. But it's, they're like, um, I, I'd say like adolescent, like teens, mm -hmm. early, younger, but not children. How old do you feel there? 30. Mm -hmm. So do you live in this place? I come and go from it. I think mm -hmm. I grew up here, but I travel out mm -hmm. um, to spread, I don't know, to spread information, to spread the word or spread knowledge mm -hmm. to take it to other places very good so let's close that scene and now let's go to another scene in that same lifetime when something very important is happening it feels like there's destruction all right so tell me what's happening like the ground is shaking and everything's crumbling something happened mm -hmm. they tried to open a portal and it went wrong who tried to open it they, they tried to blend in with us, but they weren't of us. I don't know, they're different. They're not us. Mm -hmm. um, 
What do they look like? Are they different? I th- they feel like they're different, but they look like us. But it feels like their aura is different than ours. Mm-hmm. Like it glows a different color. Like I feel we glow blue and they're red. Mm-hmm. So what's happened? It's offset the balance. And the energy, it's like, it's like a, like a whirlpool, like it's going, like it's mm. sucking down. It's mm-hmm. like, it feels like it's, you know, like a drain, like how a drain looks when the water's going like an upside down tornado. Mm-hmm. Where is this energy being sucked to? It just feels like it's leaving, like leaving. It's like they purposely did this. They purposely wanted to pull all the good energy out and they're sucking it out, like out of this dimension, out of this, like it's not here, it's leaving. Mm -hmm. And they're putting it somewhere else on purpose. How does that make you feel? Um, well, mad. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel mad and it makes me really sad. Like, why would you, why would anyone do this? Why would you do this? It feels very manipulative. Like they, they, what I hear is they bit their time, right? Like they did their time of mm-hmm. pretending and playing to get us with our guard down and welcome them. And this is always their intention. Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens next. I'd like for you to now close that scene and let's go to another scene in that same lifetime. Let's see what happens. So I'm on a boat. And I'm going, I'm leaving there. Where are you heading? I'm, I, I get it, the Yucatan Peninsula. Like down to land south of me. Mm-hmm. What is this land? It feels yellow and orange to me. Mm-hmm. Are you by yourself or are there others with you? No, I'm in a boat. We're taking knowledge. Mm-hmm. Like, my boat feels green. But that's the energy of the people in the boat. Mm-hmm. Green? Yeah, so it's like there's different people in different boats, but we all have different colors. Right? Yeah. So one boat's like they're yellow, and one boat's they're blue, mm-hmm. and my boat's green. Are you radi- radiating green? Yeah, it's like the, the boat is not, it, the boat isn't green, but the mm-hmm. people, the energy in the boat is green. Does yes. That, Okay. So let's see where you go. I feel like we're going up a river inland. Like we want to hide. And we're all dispersing and going different ways. So each of the boats goes a different path, Mm -hmm. different way. We don't want to be together because we don't want all the knowledge hidden, right? Or, you know, in one spot. So it has to be separated. It has to go uh, different places. But we all, we communicate telepathically, so it's okay that we're going in different places. Mm -hmm. So where is your group going? Feels like into the jungle mm-hmm. to set up camp. So let's find out what happens next. So I'm in a village, and what I see is we've set up life in a village. But at root, I don't feel safe. I'm still not safe because I can telepathically see that others have been found, like we were pursued. 
So we have to go further. We have to go deeper. We have to pull up camp and go further. We have to move more. Keep mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. It's weird because we're so connected to the land. So it's the birds that guide us. Like they, mm. And they show us where to be sheltered, like where it's safe. I feel like we go behind a waterfall. Like We're not going to be so much in the open right now until it calms down. What's behind that waterfall? It's like a giant cave. Mm hmm But it's hidden by the water. So you wouldn't just see us, right? Because mm -hmm. before we were kind of in the open off of the river. But now we've gone in really deep. So we can stay here and, and it's safer. So we're not seen. We're not found mm -hmm. more. We can be... The animals, the, the land can see us, but we don't want these beings to see us or find us. I feel cloaked behind the waterfall. Mm -hmm. Like we can shield. So do you do anything in this cave? Well, we live in the cave. Um, I feel like we paint on the walls, we build fires, we tell stories, and we gather the children so they don't forget. Whose children are you gathering? The green ones, the ones that came with us. Mm -hmm. Everybody was separated based on their aura. So they're the ones under our care. It was like a community, right? So we didn't have ownership to the children. It's not like, I mean, you do, like you have your mom and your dad, but when they were born into our community, they became, everybody became responsible at once. So there's not like separation sorrow for the children. They're just with us. They're just, we're there. They'll learn from us. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what happens next. Close that scene and let's go to the next significant scene in that same lifetime. Be there now. Where are you? I feel like I've been found, like I'm out scouting and I've been seen. So I'm having a confrontation. Who are you? I'm confronted with one of the red ones, but it's weird because he wants to be join us, but I don't trust him. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's, yeah, how it makes my head hurt so much. Like he's trying to force, he's so powerful, oh wow. So he's trying to plant seeds in my mind to trust him. That's why my head hurts. But I won't. This time, no. So I'm going to lead him away, take him somewhere else. Do they look the same as you? They look the same, but they're not the same. Mm -hmm. They're red. Everything's in color. Mm -hmm. But just their aura, like I see their auras. But if you were, like, if you were just to look at me and them, you would think we were the same, but I can just see that they're different. Like, you can color. tell by the vibration or the color? The color, the vibration, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens? I probably go to a, I just know my way. I just always know my way. So I take him to a giant waterfall and I jump off. Mm -hmm. He's not going to follow me. Wonderful. So now let's close that scene and let's go to the next significant scene in that lifetime. Tell me what happens. I'm older and it's peaceful. Mm -hmm. Look around, where are you? I feel like I'm up in the mountains on a plateau. And we've had a very peaceful life here. Are you by yourself or are there others with you? No, I'm surrounded. I'm, I'm an elder now in the mm -hmm. village. Mm -hmm. So they care about my stories. I tell a lot of stories. Like sharing the wisdom of the tribe. Mm -hmm. And who we were and what we've gone through and what we lost. 
Have you assimilated to a different tribe, or is this the same group? We've joined tribes mm -hmm. over... So it's some of the same, but there's others there. So we've kind of mixed in and found some of our people, and we're, we're with different with new people, too. Very good. So now let's close that scene. Let's go to the last day of your life in that lifetime. Be at the last day. Tell me where you are. I'm laying in a bed, and I see a golden cord. Mm -hmm. Where is this golden cord? Where's it come from? It's coming from the sky. Mm -hmm. And it just is like, if I take it, then I'll just go home. Mm -hmm. It's peaceful. So go ahead and take that last breath and follow that golden cord and tell me what happens as your soul leaves. Feels like it's just floating. Mm -hmm. Like bliss, it's pure happiness. Feels good. So go ahead and absorb that feeling into every cell of your body. That bliss. A feeling of well-being. I go through your body and just feel what that sensation is like. And now that you've been in that bliss, let's find out the next available life that has information for you. I'd like for you to go ahead, close that scene, and now let's go drifting and floating to another time and another place. Be there now. Where are you? I don't really know where I am, but I feel like I'm a slave, mm -hmm. like I've been imprisoned. All right, so focus on your body. Tell me what do you look like. I'm a female, mm -hmm. and I have darker skin. Tell me more. I have dark hair, but it's all wrapped. Mm -hmm. It's like wrapped in a like cloth or something on my head. I see myself washing my face in the water, like a stream, like I'm running, like I've gotten away, but I hear dogs barking. Mm -hmm. What's happening? I'm trying to escape, and I'm running. I don't know. If I'll get away, there's just, it feels so, like the dogs are so close. So I'd like for you to pause, pause that scene and let's go back in time to find out about your circumstances of where you were enslaved. Close that scene and go back to when you were enslaved and see yourself there. Be there now. I'm on a ranch. Mm-hmm. The work is hard. I'm what tired. do you do there? I'm cleaning. I feel like I'm scrubbing clothes. Are you male or female? I'm female. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel there? Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Can I'm you? just so sad. It's mm -hmm. just a really... Sad, mm -hmm. heavy, because I'm not supposed to be here. This isn't what I, this isn't my path. I just like I didn't sign up for this. Mm -hmm. What is this? What do you call yourself in that life? Joanne. Mm -hmm. Joanne, what year is this? 1300? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just your first impression. How are you dressed, Joanne? Like in rags, simple, mm -hmm. dirty. Like everything's dirty. My hands, my fingernails, everything's just my face. I feel the dirt, grit. Joanne, I want you to go ahead and tell me what's happening there. What leads you to want to escape? 
they torture and rape us. <clears throat> you don't have to experience it, just be an observer. It's, it's just controlled. Everything you do, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, there's no... You can't even go to the bathroom without being watched. Mm -hmm. What is this place? Where are you? I hear the Sahara, mm -hmm. and it's hot. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to the scene right before you escape. Well, they're not watching me for some reason. They're distracted. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody set up the distraction, though. Tell me more. What do you do? I'm with a couple of people and we run. We just start running. Like, Where do you run to? What's the terrain like there? So I feel like I'm on the desert like sand, but I run to, to a tree line mm -hmm. to get hidden. And then what happens? I'm trying to, I don't even know which way is right or left, you know, I don't know up or down, I don't know where I'm going, so I'm just running. Are you by yourself at that point? Yeah, mm -hmm. I've lost everybody else, we've mm -hmm. all scattered. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get in water, I'm trying to find water, because I'll lose the scent of the dogs if I get in the water. I feel like I hit my head. Mm -hmm. What did you hit your head on? Like a rock. So I'm bleeding. That's why I was washing my face in the water mm -hmm. first. So let's see what happens now. I feel like they catch me and they drown me. Too uh, much trouble. Mm -hmm. Too much more trouble than I'm worth. That's what they say. So I'd like for you to transition out of that body, leave that body behind, and as you do, tell me what happens to your soul. Where do you go? I go to like a regeneration center because it was so sad and heavy. Mm -hmm. Describe this regeneration center. I just see beds, and I'm laying in a bed, drinking a fluid. It's like having PTSD, mm -hmm. and I just have to calm down. Who's there with you? I feel like they're higher spiritual beings, but they're, you know, like attendants or nurse. I wouldn't say a nurse, but it would be like that, like <laughs> just overseeing it and calming us down, calming me down. I mean, there's others there, so they'll calm the others too. It's like having night terrors. Mm -hmm. What happens while you're there? I just see myself painting, mm -hmm. like rehabilitation. This is what you do to feel better? Paint? It's to clear the memories of the, of the experience of the life. So we have the paintings calming. Mm -hmm. It's the colors that change it, the vibration. So the place where you paint, are there others with you? Or are you by yourself? Um, there's the others there doing it, but it's not like I'm with them. I'm on myself there, mm -hmm. in my own space doing it. Take a look at what you're painting and tell me what it is. 
I'm painting the waterfall I jumped off mm-hmm. of. And I'm longing for that feeling. So as you look back at that life, as you're painting it, what was the purpose of that lifetime? Good question. <laughs> it's... Uh, to be flexible mm-hmm. and allow things to change and not hold on to the past. Mm-hmm. What lessons did you learn from that lifetime? How to let go mm-hmm. and do trust. Th- do you think you did a good job on that one? On that one, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's go to life as a slave. What was the purpose of that lifetime? To show me the error of my ways. Mm-hmm. What were those? What you choose. Why did you choose that lifetime as a slave? It's, I felt like it, it had to do with trust and trusting the wrong people. Mm-hmm. Discernment, lack of discernment. What did you learn? To be wary question more Hmm. trust myself Mm -hmm. trust my intuition I knew better so what lesson did you learn as a slave girl (sighs) self trust Mm -hmm. I didn't really learn it but (laughs) that's what you need to learn right I needed to learn that very good So let's see what happens after you finish rehabilitating yourself, regenerating your energy from this place. Mm -hmm. Where do you go to next? I feel like I'm on a floating city. Mm -hmm. Describe it for me. It's beautiful. Everything is like see-through like all the buildings are there but you can see through everything Mm -hmm. like glass it's not hard like glass it's more forgiving Mm -hmm. and it's soft everything feels soft and happy there are many different uh, there's I mean there's grass there's water mm -hmm. but and thoughts of buildings. It seems that this is where I go to school. Mm-hmm. So let's find out what you're learning now. I'm learning to be a healer. Mm-hmm. How do I do that? I trust what I hear within. Mm-hmm. And I sort through the distractions and I stay focused. And when I focus my energy on the person I'm working with, I can help them. Mm -hmm. But it's like I'm always being thrown distractions to get me off guard or off path. So what distractions are there now? It's just like clamoring or people arguing, trying to get my focus shifted. I just laugh and send them some happiness. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's about learning to focus my energy here. So they're always throwing different just events. Oh, it's interesting. So they want to like to initiate a, a response. Mm-hmm. Let's see how that's done. Oh, they try to anger me, but I'm just laughing. That makes them mad. <laughs> so. They try to push my buttons. Oh, that gets me. Yeah, when they hit my buttons, that makes me mad. So, so no, I'm not, that's not a good. Yeah, I'm not on track. Mm-hmm. So, who is the one who is pushing your buttons? It's an antagonist, but it's a teacher. Mm-hmm. Like we're gonna send you to Earth, but you have to learn to stay focused and not be distracted. So I have different teachers that play different roles. Maybe you have like the different characters. 
that I'll encounter, mm -hmm. the different challenges I'll have. Do you get to practice with them a lot? I do. It's a hard assignment. Mm -hmm. Are there any there that will be going to the earth with you? That's full. I see lots of people. So let's find out when it is that you choose who the people in your life are going to be when you come to earth. It's more like we're magnetically drawn to each other mm -hmm. or we have similar lessons mm -hmm. to learn. Do you have a contract with these people? Yes. Mm -hmm. We agree to help each other. Okay. Have you done this in different lifetimes together? Some yes, some no. Okay. Some are new. Mm -hmm. Some are familiar. Very good. Now the lifetime that you're preparing for now, what are you going to next? Um, I'm going, it's a small town, mm -hmm. and I'm meant to, to help and to heal. It's really challenging because anybody who's gifted, like they're scared of them. Mm -hmm. And they make them, they attack them. So how do you guarantee that you're not going to be attacked next time? Hmm. It's more like I have to hide what I... I have to hide what I do. So they don't know I'm doing it. Mm hmm So I have to take a normal role, like a I get like even like a classroom teacher. I like to be with the kids. Mm -hmm. And so I'm teaching them, but they won't know what I'm teaching them. Mm -hmm. Do you do this in a cryptic way or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving, I'm opening their gifts, but they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the moment before you go to that next lifetime and tell me who's there with you as you leave that area. I see my brother. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and friends. What is the agreement that you have? <laughs> to stay hidden. <laughs> to stay hidden. Mm. And what is the purpose for staying hidden? Because we have to change the vibration. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, it's not about being seen or acknowledged because that doesn't, that won't serve us in this, in this experience. It doesn't serve the, it doesn't serve the highest good. Mm -hmm. It's more important to just be there to shift the energy. Very good. How do you select the family that you'll be going to? I pick a family that's full of love. Mm -hmm. Lots of love. Like the wife loves the dad, the mom loves, and there's just love. Wonderful. So let's go ahead and go to that lifetime. Leave that scene behind and now go to that next lifetime and tell me where you are. I'm on a jumbo tram. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Like, um, I feel like I'm a, like in the military or something, like I'm going to parachute out of a plane. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Like I'm jumping out. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Tell me more. Um, I I feel like I should be scared, but I'm not scared. Um, and it's my turn to jump. I'm like I love it. Mm -hmm. Where are you? 
like I'm over an ocean. Mm-hmm. It's super challenging. Like I have to jump and swim and come in under the cover of night. Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens. I have to infiltrate mm-hmm. and become a part of the community, but it hurts my head. Why is that? I don't know. It gives me a bad headache. Like it's difficult. It'll be a challenge. What year is it for you? Uh, you're 1932. Mm-hmm. Where are you located? The South Sea of China. Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens. Where is it that you land? Just... Like, I land on an island. I think I was supposed to land in the water, but I don't land in the water. Mm-hmm. And I have to reassess my situation. It's like, oh, something happened, like the plane was being shot at or something. Mm-hmm. So you left prematurely? Yeah, we're off course. Mm-hmm. Was this where you were supposed to be, this island? No. Mm-hmm. So what happens here? Kind of like reassessing, reassess, like gather together, figure it out, and make a new plan. All right. So close that scene and let's go to the next scene that's, a, that's significant in that lifetime. What happens now? I feel like I'm in a school and I'm a teacher. I'm teaching English. Mm-hmm. Is this the same lifetime? Yeah, it's like how I infiltrated into All right. into the community. Mm-hmm. Are you male or female there? I'm male. Mm-hmm. Look at your features. Where are your features from? Hmm. They look like. I I feel like I'm um, from India. Mm-hmm. Tell me more. What do you look like? Um, I have dark hair, and I'm thin. I'm not like stick though. Like I. I have a strong build. Mm-hmm. You're just slim? Slim. Mm-hmm. I think this is because I eat well. Mm-hmm. I don't know why where that's coming from, but it's something about the food that I eat. But I'm here to get to know the land, the people, the what the what's really it's like we've been told lies or something and so I'm, I'm the infiltration is to get to know the people, to know the story. Mm-hmm. What else do you see there? Anything else? I just always see children. Mm-hmm. What do you go by in that in that uh, lifetime? What's your name? It starts with an S, but I don't. I can't. Mm-hmm. Or not. I don't know. Okay. What that, all right, not important. So close that scene now, and let's go to a next significant scene in that same lifetime. So I feel like I'm back home, and I'm being debriefed, and I'm like the people that I was with didn't know whatever was being told to us. They, they, these people, I, that wasn't true. Mm-hmm. It wasn't these people weren't experiencing that or weren't like that or didn't have hatred or anger or... Mm-hmm. Do you feel that you changed the way they think? I feel like I've... they've changed the way I think. Ah, okay. So how so, has that changed your life? More compassion. Mm-hmm. Um, open mind to others to other cultures, other people, and not worried so much about 
want to say like what the government story is or whatever is being told. It doesn't. No, don't listen to that. That that's not what the people think. Mm-hmm. So having more openness and compassion to getting to know the people. Very good. Is there anything important in that scene? Any more? No, I just can't get the people above me to understand. All right. But other no. All right, so let's close that scene, and now let's go to the next significant scene in that same lifetime, and tell me what's happening. It's funny, I'm married, but I've moved my family back there, because mm. I liked it there. I wanted to raise my kids there. How funny. Hmm. It wasn't what they said it was. I liked it there. Mm-hmm. I got along with the people. Very good. Anything else significant from that scene? No. Okay. So now let's move to the last day of your life in that lifetime. Go to the last day. I feel like I was poisoned because my jaw hurts really bad. Mm -hmm. Like it's in my... It's in my bones or mm-hmm. something. You can just see it as an observer. You don't have to go through that. Just see it. Observe it. And let's see what happens to your soul. What happens? It's like my soul gets trapped. Mm-hmm. Where does it go to? Where is this trap? Um, so I, I see myself going through a tube. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of like, it's like sludge. I'm just kind of dropped out. I don't know why. I, oh, but this isn't at all what I'm used to. Why did this happen? Mm-hmm. Let's follow that sludge and see what happens. Where do you go? I feel like I go into a cavern. Mm-hmm. And it's really dark in there. What do you do in this cavern? I hear I'm getting a mind wipe. I'm mm-hmm. getting like a memory wipe, and now, like I've been taken prisoner, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be used for missions. So they're wiping my mind. Let's find out who's doing that. See it as an observer, and you'll be able to retain the memory part from the mind swipe. interesting. So they're reptilian. Mm-hmm. It's like there's good ones and bad ones. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of mixed. And some of them there want to do good things. Like victim of circumstance. Hmm. Why do you imagine they've taken you? Well, they want me to stop disrupting them. Mm-hmm. And they want me to work for them. That's what it feels like. Have they kidnapped your soul? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Mm-hmm. Like they've taken my soul. So let's try and find out what happens after they've taken your soul. It's like they put me through classes and try to show me their way. Mm-hmm. Show me their perspective. What happens? What do you see? I do, I feel like I have lots of compassion for them. Mm-hmm. Like maybe misunderstood at some level. What is their What is their mindset? What are they trying to do? Conquer. Mm-hmm. For what purpose? It's what drives them. Mm-hmm. It's like their mission is. They're always. I feel like they're mind wiped all the time mm-hmm. and constantly put back on this track and maybe not the path they want to be on either. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, it's to conquer, always to conquer, take over control. So what do they do with your soul after that? Continue. They're going to put me in a body. Mm-hmm. Let's find out what body that is. 
it feels like a very poor vagrant. Like they're going to put me into a lower, it's like moving me into a lower vibration. Mm -hmm. Like almost like a, like a caste system where I'm at the bottom of the, of the caste. Mm -hmm. So see yourself now as this vagrant. Tell me how old you are. I'm 12. I'm just trying to eat. Mm -hmm. It's a hard life. But I always feel like there's this light within me, so I'm always seeking it, but everything comes hard. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and fast forward through this life and tell me what happens there. I feel like I become a monk. Mm -hmm. Because I can't handle the poverty and the darkness, so I seek a place of refuge. Mm -hmm. So let's stop, <laughs> stop the life there and find out a little bit about this monk's life. Where are you? I'm in the outside, meditating. Let's find out mm -hmm. who you connect to while you're meditating. I hear Metatron. Mm -hmm. It's like I can regain some. Of, I've regained some of my memory of who I am. Mm -hmm. How is Metatron helping you? I'm clearing the amnesia, helping me remember. The meditation helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. It helps me rebalance and process the traumatizing life, like the trauma from the childhood. I feel like there's always a dark force after me though. It's interesting because it feels like they're mad that mm -hmm. I didn't, you always get I away. didn't take. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't sink me low enough or something. Hmm, they, yeah, that couldn't hold me down. So what happens as this life as this monk? What do you experience? Solitude, a lot of solitude. What does that do to your soul? It's lonely. Mm -hmm. It wants to connect with others, but I don't trust them. Very good. So close that scene now, close that scene and go to the last day of your life in that lifetime. I'm a very old man. I'm blind. And I'm ready to go. All right, so see yourself on that last day, taking your last breath, transitioning out of that body. And as you transition out of that body, look back at that, uh, that lifetime and tell me, what was the purpose of that lifetime? To know that it is within. Anybody can come and attack you or trap you or do anything, but everything that you is within you. Mm -hmm. They can't take that. Very good. What lessons? The same lesson I can't learn. Trusting myself. Mm -hmm. Trusting others. Very good. So go ahead and allow that that man to continue on his journey. And take a deep breath in now. And let me speak with your higher self. Do I have permission to ask questions today? Yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I know you could have shown Amanda many different lifetimes today, and you did. Would you explain to her why you showed her this life of Atlantis? She wanted to know where the sorrow came from, mm -hmm. the deep sorrow. So is the sorrow for her, from her losing? It's from us all losing. Mm -hmm. Does 
she need to be connected to this sorrow anymore? No. Can we disconnect from that place? Yes. Let's disconnect that lifetime, taking with it the good things and releasing the sorrow. Is there anything else you would like to tell her about that lifetime? She did the best she could do. Mm -hmm. It was hard to know that this was what was coming. So how did she change in that lifetime? What changes did she make? She stopped trusting. Mm -hmm. Is that where the origin of all, of it all was? Yeah. All right. So we don't need to be connected to that anymore. Allow that to be disconnected from her. And the next thing that you showed her was a life of a slave running away, getting caught, drowning. Why did you show her that life? That's what happens when you don't trust. Mm -hmm. Is she not trusting in herself? Who was she not trusting? She didn't trust herself. She didn't listen to herself. Mm -hmm. She knew better. Is she connected to that life in any way now? Is it affecting her in any way? <clears throat> yes, because she doesn't trust very many people. Very good. So then she went to a regeneration center mm -hmm. where she was learning to paint. What'd you show her that? It's how to deal with trauma. Mm -hmm. It's soothing. It will help her. Does she need to paint? She needs to paint. Mm -hmm. I've told her a lot. She just doesn't do it. Who's going to guide her to paint? Can we get her a guide? A painter who will help her use her skills as a painter. Yes. Thank you so much. You then showed her a floating city. Can you tell her why you showed her that where they were teaching her about anger and pushing her buttons? Where is this floating city, first of all? It's just above where she is now. I just want her to know that she can go there to, mm -hmm. to you know, learn new lessons or mm -hmm. re relearn lessons mm -hmm. of how to deal and process. How can she get to this floating city? If she meditates, she'll just go there. All right. Does anybody help her with her meditations? She has lots of guides. She does. Is there anyone in particular that helps her with this? I hear Jim. Mm -hmm. Jim okay. helps. Very good. Thank you, Jim. Then you showed her a life of a man in the military who parachutes out of a plane and that's a, ends up teaching. S service. Mm -hmm. Obedience. <laughs> service and obedience? Did she Just learn? Just listening, yes. Has she learned that? No, she's kind of a renegade. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like to listen. Why did they poison her in that lifetime? <sighs> For going against the grain. Mm -hmm. Does she carry any of that fear with her in this lifetime? A lot, mm -hmm. yes. So is that lifetime affecting her a lot? It's affecting her food in this lifetime. How is it affecting her food? eating things that she shouldn't, that aren't good for her. It's like, it's not poison, but it's not, it's like poison for her system. What food in particular is bad for her? The wheat. The wheat. So she needs to eliminate all wheat products? Yes, mm -hmm. we've been pushing her. Mm -hmm. Does she have a guide who helps her with this? Yes. All right. I'd like to thank that guide and continue working so that she doesn't eat any wheat. What about the life between lies where reptilians kidnapped her? 
What happened there? It was a good lesson mm-hmm. to not judge everything by a cover. Like a, don't judge a book by its cover. Mm-hmm. So what would you like to say about the reptilians at this time? Is she still connected with them in some way? Yes, but not how it seemed in that life. It's more like helping them. Mm-hmm. She's helping. She needs to help them? The ones that are ready to leave, yes. Mm-hmm. How many are there? There's lots. Mm-hmm. So how can she help them leave? <sighs> uh, it's through the heart. She shows them through the heart that they, they can open their heart chakra. Mm-hmm. It's like they don't... They skipped that mm-hmm. lesson. Mm-hmm. But they can go back. They can go back and do that? Because the time isn't linear. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. They can fix it. All right. So once they fix that, what will that do to the reptilians? There'll be love. There'll be love. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Is there any way that we can accelerate that? In the face of darkness and evil, we can be kind. Mm-hmm. So what lesson do we need to learn from that today? She encounters people in this lifetime that are not very kind. Not, I just not to worry about it, not to let it bring you down or affect you. Mm-hmm. And learn to shield and to move forward. Okay. Is she addressing that in her life now? Anything that she needs to... She takes on too much Mm -hmm. of their stuff. She says that as an empath, she feels their pain. Yeah, but she doesn't... She wants to fix their pain. Ah. Hmm. What would you like to tell her about that? You can't fix it. Mm -hmm. It's not yours to fix. Is she kind of interfering with their free will? She yes, Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So as empaths... We try to fix the world, but it's really not there for us to fix, is there? Each person has to walk their own path. Yes, or you take on their stuff. Mm -hmm. So how can we shield ourselves? Just by sending kindness? We can make it an intention Mm -hmm. to show compassion and love, but not take on their pain. Mm -hmm. Very good more should she be doing to live in her purpose? Not be in fear. Mm -hmm. So trust that the universe will send her people that she can work with and she won't take on their stuff. And it will help her as much as it helps them. Mm -hmm. So it has to be two ways also. Teach, learn, and learn, teach at the same time. Okay. Why is it she's so unhappy? She sabotages herself. She feels worthless. She's sad all the time. What's causing that? She's scared if she becomes who she is, then mm-hmm. no one will love her. Mm-hmm. Well, we saw that in the first lifetime, she was a priestess that many came to, wait, waited for her to come to, to them, to listen to, to her. Isn't she really doing the same thing now? <laughs> she is. Mm-hmm. We hide it from her. <laughs> it's right in her face right now, isn't it? Yes. So now that she understands that she was doing this in Atlantis, and she's basically doing the same thing now, how can we get her feeling a lot happier. Just know that she's love. Mm -hmm. And when she's sharing love, 
it's just all you create. Mm-hmm. And not to worry. When she says, oh, funny, when she puts her foot in her mouth, they need to hear it anyways. Uh-huh. So don't worry about it. So those times that she feels embarrassed that she said something and possibly offended them? She's channeling. She's channeling. So she needs to allow that foot to go into her mouth and just allow it to come out the way it is? Yeah, and not and not carry the burden of it. Mm-hmm. Not apologize for it? Right. Mm-hmm. But or but not it's like she takes it home and beats herself up with it. Okay. She needs to stop. We've been teaching her to say make let it go with grace and ease. Mhm. So now that she understands this, does she need to continue to sabotage herself? She shouldn't. No, it's time it's time to work. All right. So can I ask for you to begin working on her? so that she can see that immediately when she starts to sabotage herself and catch herself at it. Can we do that? Yes. Thank you. And what's making her so sad? She feels so alone. Mm Mm-hmm. Tell me why she feels so alone. Well, first of all, she isolates herself, so that's not helping her. Mm Mm-hmm. What would you suggest? She gets out and gets into groups and finds like-minded people. Mm-hmm. Do you imagine that happens to a lot of people who are on this path? They can't find others to talk with. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's hard here on Earth to mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. And we have to make the effort, and it's easier not to. Mm-hmm. It's safer, isn't it? It feels safer, but it's not safer. The safety's in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Isolating yourself leaves you open to attack. Mm. Okay. So she needs to get get her support. Mm Kind of like what she did when she was running away from that, from Atlantis. Right. And no, and use her discernment, trust her discernment. Mm Mm-hmm. Sometimes she wants things to work when she knows they shouldn't work. Mm-hmm. Okay, good, good. Now, she told me that she had a lucid dream in which she was told repeatedly that everything is within the major arcana. Yes. Can you explain to her in detail what that is? The cards show the path of least resistance. Mm-hmm. So when you work with the cards, it shows you how to navigate the challenges that are coming. And not to fear the challenges, but be prepared. Because when we have preparation and we have knowledge, then we're not acting out of fear. We're coming with wisdom. And wisdom is what is the light is within the wisdom knowledge, information. It helps to make better decisions, Mm -hmm. better choices. So what tarot cards are best for her to use? She's been using the angel cards. Would you like to tell her about that? The parlor tricks. Um, That's what I was... She needs a deck of just the tarot, or just the major arcana. She has her decks mixed, Mm -hmm. so she needs to separate the deck. I think the deck she has will be fine for her to use if she separates it. Mm -hmm. But I know she wants a deck with the Fool. I don't think that's in her deck now. Mm -hmm. So find a deck that's more aligned to what's... She likes the deck and the Law of One because we broke out a lot of information in the Law of One in Book 4 about the cards. So find a deck where the the fool is is the last card. All right. So the fool has to be always card number for her. For her, not for everybody. Okay, but for her because that's how she came to it and learned about it. Okay, good. Otherwise, it won't feel authentic to her. Mm-hmm. She she says that she often feels that she's talking to someone or receiving guidance. 
Who is that? Her higher self. Mm hmm. But she can pull in others at times. Mm hmm. Are these that she pulls in beneficial for her? Mostly. Mm hmm. But how, how do you them. know if someone is not helping you that you're pulling in? It doesn't feel right. It feels off. Um, there are many people who channel, for example, and they say that they're channeling a certain person or a being. How, how would you discern whether that one is really giving you guidance? She needs to always ask for them to be of her highest good and okay. for her to serve the highest good. Not just even her highest, but to serve the highest. Mm -hmm. So there should be a ritual for her when she begins? She should use a ritual. Okay, to good. To clear the energy. I know she sages a lot. Mm -hmm. This helps clear the energy. Mm -hmm. um, she, should, she should hold her citronite crystal mm -hmm. in her right hand. Okay, good. This will help her. Wonderful. Can you tell her a little bit about the uh, the event? What is it? And is it really it's going energy. to... energy. Mm -hmm. It's a burst of energy. But it's not just one. It's, it's, it's like ever-growing. Mm -hmm. It feels like it'll happen at different times for different people. What will they feel? Elation. It's like a wave that rolls over you. Does it last? Or is it just momentary? It feels like it comes and goes, but it feels like when it, what it does is it takes like a lens off so you see clear, there's more clarity. Mm -hmm. It's based on your vibrational frequency and where you are in your soul's growth. And they what happens to you is based on your path and on, on where you're going. You know, you know. Mm -hmm. So would it be um, <clears throat> would it be logical to say that some people has al have already uh, been through the event? Or has that ha not happened yet? Mm. It's, com it's complicated mm -hmm. based on your timeline. Okay. It's a turning point for people. Mm -hmm. So, in some ways, it's experienced by all at once. But it's but we're in separation here, so there is different times that mm -hmm. people experience it. If, if that makes sense, it's hard to. Well, she asks about that about positive timeline or negative timeline. Does it? Are some people on a positive and a negative timeline? Does that exist? Yes. They'll okay. be different. They'll be splits. So tell me a little bit more about that. Can There's separation. Mm -hmm. Based on your color mm -hmm. and your attunement, you'll have different experiences. So the color is the vibration, correct? It's an indication of the vibration that okay. you're on. Okay. Okay. So can we switch if we were on a negative timeline to a positive one? Is that possible? Can we change our vibration? You can change your vibration, but it, it depends where you are on the, on the scale. So I can't say that you could go from negative, like 95% negative. To, you can switch. Mm -hmm. But you may not make the, the harvest this one. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. It doesn't matter because time only exists here. Okay. It's, it's endless elsewhere. So the, this this constrains um, the soul's thought in this form, um, makes them worried or fearful that they get stuck. But there's 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 no being stuck. Mm -hmm. It just is. So you can change your timeline. 
Well, you're saying we can change it. Will there be a split at any time? For example, will there be it's multiple paths based on your vibrational frequency? Yes. Okay. She's been told there's three of them, positive, negative, and neutral. Is this true? They exist, but there's more. Okay. Can you tell me about the more? There's many shades of gray, I, but it's not, but there's many colors, right? So the rainbow is like dispersed. So, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's three main paths, mm -hmm. but there's different shades on each path, okay. different gradients, different rays, different trajectories. Mm -hmm. Do they all go to different places or they're similar? They'll go to different places. Okay. So someone, for example, going on a positive. They'll go to the new earth. They'll go to the new earth. Mm -hmm. Is anybody on that new earth already? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's th there's many there, and guides and people ready, waiting to bring on the new people. Okay. Are these humans that are on the new earth? They're higher dimensional humans. Okay. What about the negative path? Where does that go? It, it, it's dark, sorry. The dark side? Yes, it's a dark path. Now, if someone were to go on the dark side, what would they experience? Manipulation um, of others, how to control. Uh, it's more service to self. Mm -hmm. But it, there's no judgment. I. There's such a misunderstanding. There's not judgment on the path that you take. So there's no good or bad. It's not like that. No, it's it's not broken out, and that that's too simple to say because there's lessons that a soul. So say maybe a soul goes to seventh density and and took the positive path, but decides to recycle and go the negative path because there's there's valuable lessons on both sides. Mm -hmm. So. There's too much judgment of it and too much misunderstanding, so it's difficult to channel that information through because it's distorted mm -hmm. and judged. Okay. She wants you to explain the harvest described in the Law of One. Can you do that? We showed it to her mm -hmm. in the test tube. It's like... It's soft, it's gentle. It's not like what they're trying to portray. I know the question she asked. It's mm -hmm. not like that. Well, she wants to know if it's like the movie Jupiter Ascending. No. That isn't what the harvest is. So but she they wants, tried to distort that. She wants to know if we must be at 51% positive to be harvested. Um, for the positive timeline, you have to be over 51% 50, positive, but Everyone will harvest, but not on the same trajectory. Hmm. So you could go negative. You could the, it breaks out into the paths. Okay. What happens when someone, for example, has a loved one, and they're on a different path? Do they disappear from our reality? If if the harvest comes, how does that work? Yes, but there isn't a loss felt if mm. that happens. Okay. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's a mind wipe because it's not that, but it's a, it's, there's, there's a greater understanding if, if, if a soul goes a different way, it's okay. Mm -hmm. There's not, it's not like how in human form, human like when someone dies, right? And, right. And there's there's deep sorrow and loss. It's joy and love for that person finding their path. Like mm. you, it, it feels like, like elation. Like you would never want to compromise that soul's journey. Ever. It's their it's their journey. Right, and it's a great under. In the harvest, there's clarity and understanding. So there's no judgment of, of, or fear. Mm -hmm. There's just an understanding of it? It feels like there's clarity and there's 
recognition that that soul had a different path than yours and there's only one so it's okay you'll come you'll see them it just does that make sense it I don't know how to explain it isn't that the way some people in some societies view life anyway very limited that way that each person has their own path and you don't interfere yes but that's not been her experience okay good are we living in some sort of a simulation yes mm -hmm. how does that work the white light is distributed mm -hmm. and it's completion of lessons and growth of soul we choose it it's not bad meaning it's not you're not um, you're not trapped mm -hmm. there's traps in the way and along the way but it's not like you chose to do the simulation mm-hmm Okay. <clears throat> Has this simulation been corrupted by the darkness? There's an imbalance in this one. Mm hmm Yes. What's causing this imbalance? What have they done? They tipped the scales. That's so clever. Mm hmm What does that mean, tip the scales? Manipulated. Like her what we showed her in Atlantis trusting and believing and being manipulated and then having everything ripped out from under mm. just like the, the darkness coming in and taking out the light like a vacuum like like it sucked it out well she saw that in one of her lifetimes that it was being sucked out yes has it been done again multiple times multiple times who puts it back well the light force is always working to put it back mm -hmm. there's many many who come many who do the work and they're all helping with that they're always helping with it okay it's an endless cycle she asks if she's correct in believing that we can vibrate our frequency to a level beyond the control matrix Yes, but it's difficult. You have to always work on your frequency because they're always seeking to turn you back, right? To turn the dial back mm -hmm. or to manipulate your frequency. Who's doing that? Who are they that are manipulating it? It feels like the dark forces. Um, they're, just, they're just for lessons. It's a catalyst, though, for mm -hmm. growth. It's not... It's. I don't like saying dark because I don't like to judge their role in the in the in the play or the scheme, the mm -hmm. game, the the experience. Very crafty. Mm -hmm. Very smart. When they do that, when they change the frequency. Do they change the frequency of individuals? If somebody leaves themselves open, they can. So, and explain to me how someone can leave themselves open to one of these that would manipulate us. How does that happen? When they fall victim or prey mm -hmm. to that like the victimhood consciousness like allowing themselves to believe that they are less than or not good enough or mm -hmm. worthless they open up just by having that thought they open up the space for the negative being mm -hmm. to infiltrate and manipulate that within them do they do that through energy, mind control, or do they actually attach themselves to the body? 
all of the above. All of the above. They can do it. There's different beings on different levels, different dimensions, different spaces. They can come from different aspects. Mm-hmm. So you can have an entity that's stuck, that vibrates at a frequency with something within the body, right? Like an organ. Mm-hmm. And it can attach itself to that organ if that organ has a lower vibrational frequency. So it doesn't, like, you're the per like your being, your body could vibrate at a high frequency, but an organ could become imbalanced. Mm-hmm. And then within that organ, there could be an um, entity that manipulates. So it could be considered like an illness or a disease? Yes. Okay. So how can a lay person, someone who doesn't know much about attachments or entities, how can we get rid of these ourselves? Is it possible? How do we f- kind of raise our own vibration to release them? First, we you must become aware that the that that it exists, mm-hmm. and open your mind to the possibility of other realms exploring or being open to you that mm-hmm. you are unaware of. Mm-hmm. Um, the the individual needs to we've made videos of this she's made, she makes videos of this mm-hmm. for people to help to see that so and there's books she uses a book that she shares always mm-hmm. with people that help you identify the emotion that's trapped the negative vibration frequency that's trapped within the organ mm-hmm. and when you make it conscious bring it into your awareness, you release it, you can shift that. Okay. But sometimes things are embedded deeper and come from past and multiple lifetimes. So sometimes you require a coach or uh, someone to help you move through it. Mm -hmm. Um, And once you learn, then you can move through it yourself. Wonderful. Wonderful. Good. Are there any positive ETs assisting us today. There's so many. Mm-hmm. When when all of these beings, these ETs, come here mm-hmm. to help the Earth, do they know each other? Have they agreed to all come at a certain time to work together? Well, it's not a time mm-hmm. specific in linear fashion. It doesn't work like that Mm -hmm. it's more the earth is not ready it's more that they have to come when it's ready or they've agreed to come collectively at a time well not i don't mean come because they're already here but i mean that they will not present themselves until it the the consciousness is ready for Mm -hmm. it where are these ETs that we can't see them? You say they're here. They're here. They walk among us, but mm-hmm. they're also, they surround us. But you, they vibrate at a different frequency, so they're able to shield, and you don't always see them. Mm-hmm. Are they going at a higher frequency? Well, there's higher and there's lower. Okay. They're, they're both here because it's it's like, a battle. Uh, I don't want to say like that, though. Um, I want to say it's an orchestra mm-hmm. <laughs> of events, mm-hmm. uh, many different instruments, right? If you see it in that sense, then there's many different beings and they all play different tunes. Okay. And all the tunes are necessary, the high, the low. Uh, collectively, it creates a song. Mm-hmm. A tone, a frequency, a vibration. So collectively they work together, even though it seems that how can a low vibration work with a high vibration, but they do. Hmm. It's kind of like a, a chorus would have highs and lows? Yes. Mm-hmm. So you would need some in order to balance it or make the, yes. the harmony? Yes. Mm-hmm. You can't have one without the other here. Right. 
People need to let that... I don't know, there's so much confusion with that. Can you explain that a little bit more? So it's out of balance, that's why there's frustration, but it, 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 it's um, like a melody has to be created and the balance will snap into place. Okay, good. So as humans living in this time, what do we have to do in order to snap into this with them? We have to vibrate our frequency to one of harmony. Okay. And so we are disharmonic when we allow the negative always in, right? Mm. Like the negative thoughts, the negative patterns, the negative information. Um, it's tuning out the dark negative thoughts. Mm. <clears throat> the imbalances with how much darkness there is so tune it out so it's not important to know what's happening everywhere else what's happening where you are what are you doing mm -hmm. what are you affecting who are you changing who are you being not what is happening elsewhere mm -hmm. it's we don't want to say that you shouldn't have compassion for others elsewhere or that you shouldn't send love there but you aren't there experiencing it, so how are you really to know? Mm -hmm. um, you receive it through information on your airwaves that are distorted. Unfiltered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there's the dis a disruption in the frequency bands that are transmitted. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't come with clarity. It comes distorted to you. Yes. So you cannot take that information and absorb it as truth. Um, you need to stop that. Everybody needs to just like, like turn it off. Turn off the news. Turn off. <laughs> turn off the distractions. Um, it's not for your benefit at all. It doesn't help you. It doesn't raise your vibration, mm -hmm. and it keeps you controllable. Yes, very much. How to think, what to think, when to think, where to think, what to do, how to do it. Ugh. Doesn't it put you in fear? Paralyzes it, you. It does. Fear? It does to. A, it doesn't to her, but it does to. A, yeah. Yes, the majority. Mm -hmm. She used to be there all the time, obsessed with the news. She always watched it. She felt that she would can help like if she knew what was going on all the time, everywhere, always. Mm -hmm. mm. It did not help her. So once the person turns off the news. Oh, the chatter quiets. Mm -hmm. But there's a nervousness and anxiety that takes over because you. It, I want to. Don't know how to explain. It's like taking a test tube and shaking it up, mm -hmm. and it's all mixed. Yes. And that's how you are, like <sighs> wiry. Mm -hmm. So it takes time. Mm, this is how I. This is. Do you want to go into nature then? Mm -hmm. When you turn off the news, you need to ground and settle and go into like nature to rebalance because you it's like your cells have all been shaken viciously mm -hmm. and they need to like you need to let the dust settle. Does that make sense? Yes, and the best place to do it is to ground yourself in nature. Allow nature to yeah, but maybe like you just live in the city, and that's okay. Touch a tree, right? Right. right. Um, or just touch the ground with your bare foot. It doesn't. It it isn't possible because they've moved so much of humanity into these cities, mm -hmm. right? There's so much moving into the congestion of the concrete mm -hmm. that people feel paralyzed. That they but just look up. You see the sun. You see the sky. You see a bird. Yes. It doesn't. It doesn't. That. That is a distortion it makes you think that you can't connect in the city, but you still can. So mm -hmm. you can find it. You can find grass. <laughs> Very good. Who's uh, giving the synchronicity of numbers? What's all about? That? <laughs> Everybody has the questions. Why am I seeing the synchronistic numbers? Mm. Either their birthdays or a sequence of numbers or. So to understand the the universe, it's spoken in numbers. Mm -hmm. It's a mathematical 
It's a mathematical equation. Mm -hmm. So what do and these when numbers you see mean? the patterns of the numbers, and the more numbers you see strung together, the stronger the pattern, right? So mm -hmm. the more in sync you are, the more connected you are, the more the divine is speaking through you and to you. Um, mm, so we would say it like this: You um, study if you study or, or are aware of Emoto. Mm -hmm. I think that's his name. Mm -hmm. um, with Dr. the water, Doctor Emoto. Doctor Emoto and his water crystals, right? Mm -hmm. So when there is a high vibration and the crystals solidify into a beautiful shape. They are synchronistic. Mm -hmm. They are in harmony. They are divine. They are connected. But when it is a blob, mm -hmm. right? This is just like everything is hmm, um, dis, uh, disrupted. Yeah. It's not connected. So the numbers don't form patterns. They don't um, sync. Mm -hmm. uh, this is disconnection. This is disharmonic. This is paddling your boat mm -hmm. upstream against the current. So when you are seeing the numbers, you are in the flow, you are in the current, and you should trust. So today, she was very late. She didn't think she'd make her appointment here. Mm -hmm. And we showed her so many numbers, and she kept doing the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> and doing the wrong thing, and then and then we, we, she switched her navigation system, and it was funny because then she was running two at once, so they were mm -hmm. both talking mm -hmm. at the same time, and it's confusing. But when she switched her navigation system, she was taken the right way, and mm -hmm. then the numbers flowed. So it went from the ones and in the beginning, and then when she got close here, it was all nines. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Well, I was telling her that story yesterday that I was on the airplane and saw the 111s and 333, and when I landed, I saw 333 again. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot of people are seeing these numbers. And when you talk about Dr. Moto, we are all water. So does that have anything to do with us solidifying ourselves into crystal? Are we becoming crystal clear? More so, yes. Mm-hmm. So things you can do to help mm -hmm. the water you drink. So we had, we collectively, I know that sounds weird when I say that. So we had her put on her water tanks, even in the filters in her home, love. Mm -hmm. And written mm -hmm. right on. Mm -hmm. We can absorb this. Um, you pick up a bottle, right, and, and we know you're worried about the fluoride and what's in your water, but emit love right into your water, mm -hmm. right, just through your hand, just through you, before you take a sip, it will change the water. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult. It's not challenging. You just simply need to make it your intention to do so, and it will shift the water you absorb. So then you take in more light. And the more light you take in, the more information that you will take in. And the more, and then you go on the path of seeking. Uh, mm -hmm. So then the more you seek, the more that seeks you. So it's the same thing, the, the learn, the learned and the, you kind of mentioned that already. That's involved when yes, mm -hmm. learn, teach, teach, learn. Mm -hmm. You can't learn without teaching and you can't teach without learning. They are symbiotic. They require each other in all lessons. And we, um, humans and society, like, they've tried to separate it, right? Mm -hmm. You only teach or you only learn. You always learn and teach at the same time. It's one. Very good. There's no separation. Would you tell her why she's here on this planet at this time? To raise the vibration. Mm-hmm. She she chose to be here. She wasn't. She's not imprisoned here. A lot of people so feel like they are. She was imprisoned, but she chose to stay. Mm, okay. Because that is a trap of the mind of thought. Just if that makes sense. So that once she vibrated to the frequency beyond that, she chose to stay. Mm. It's always a choice. 
it's the choice can be hidden because you don't realize that you have a choice. There's always choice. So why is she here now? To, to help. To help. Is that why a lot of people are here? Most people are here to help. Mm -hmm. They can get distracted and distorted on their path, but it doesn't keep them from emitting the frequency that they came to emit. Does okay. Is she from Earth or is she from somewhere else? Elsewhere. Elsewhere. Can you tell her where it is? The Clarion region. Clarion? Mm. Mm -hmm. The Clarion call is to heal. To help others. To be in service. Always. Mm -hmm. Are there many from the Clarion region here? Not, no, not as many. No. They come from... I don't know. They come from everywhere. It's a collective. It's hard to say that she's from somewhere, though, because there's only source, so everything goes back to source, but we come through different experiences of growth for the soul mm -hmm. to come to different places like this. Okay. okay. So it's like there was training in the Clarion. There was training in the Octarian. Mm -hmm. Training in Pallades. And different systems beyond here that help to spread the light. Okay. Was there a call from Earth? The call help? went out, mm -hmm. yes. Who, who called out? Was it Mother Earth that called out? It feels like a collective. A collective. But Mother Earth is at the heart of it. Mm -hmm. She requested assistance? Or not? She seems to be on her own. What I've heard is she's pretty powerful. She's very strong. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong. It's not like... This is what I hear. So it's not like... A, it's just like it was time. Okay. It's not like it's a call for help, but it was just... it was The call was, okay, the time is now. Okay. Come now. Kind of like labor. You have to... Yeah, like... It's, mm, it's an ascension of the of the, of the planet. Mm -hmm. The souls are ready to graduate, mm. um, which is the harvest. I, there's confusion, many different names. But it is time for that to happen, and there's no judgment. Okay. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you graduate or you don't graduate. It doesn't matter if you stay or you come or you go. It just is that that's where this space and reality is now okay good thank you very much would you do a body scan on her please and let's find out how her health is at this time so her throat is yeah, it's like clogged like <clears throat> always something stuck in her throat what is that what's causing it her words. She's not using her words. Mm -hmm. She worries about what her words will. She doesn't want to hurt people. But sometimes, hmm. see, there's the judgment. It's judging the hurt. But maybe the hurt helps the person grow. Mm -hmm. So who is she to know what her words will do or not do? But they're important to be said, and she doesn't say them. She holds them back. So they're stuck. Mm -hmm. throat. Can we do something to release that now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's begin the healing. Tell her what you're using. I'm just putting light. It's like opening the space. Mm -hmm. Allowing for the free flow and not holding on to the outcome of the words. Expanding the space in the throat. Mm. 
and vibrating it to a higher frequency. Is that opening up the throat chakra? Yes, it's healing. Very good. Can we continue as it continues to heal? Yes. What's next? Her heart. Mm -hmm. What's going on with her heart? It's like putting boulders Mm-hmm. Over it. And Why is she putting boulders over her heart? Mm, she's scared. Mm-hmm. To feel love. Can we use rose quartz today to begin the opening of her heart? Yes. Very good. I'm going to place some rose quartz on her heart. And begin using your light to remove those boulders. Is that causing any of her blood pressure problems? Yes, because she holds on to everything. Mm -hmm. She takes everything on. Mm -hmm. Does she need to do that anymore? No. Mm -hmm. Can we release that now? She should release all of it. Mm -hmm. It's a disservice to others. And while you're healing that heart, tell me what else you find. Her gallbladder. Mm -hmm. What's going on in her gallbladder? Turmoil. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. When one has turmoil, does it affect the gallbladder? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's frustration. So what are you using on her gallbladder? Just releasing the trapped energy. Thank you. Not taking it all on anymore. Stop it. How is her liver affected? Since that's where all of the stuff comes from, is from the liver into the gallbladder. Her liver is stressed mm -hmm. because she carries the anger from many experiences. <sighs> so we just want that to let go. All right. When you're done, I'd like to assist by removing all of that. Please. Mm -hmm. Tell me when you're done with your scan. <clears throat> Checking her kidneys. So the kidneys feel like sponges. Mm -hmm. And it's like absorbing all the... Mm. She's trying to absorb the fear. Mm. Why in God's name would you do that? 
Or would you tell her about that? Release. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hand over her heart. And as I do, I'd like for you to go ahead and begin removing all of that stress, all of that fear, everything you've been holding inside. Go ahead and begin removing it, releasing it, letting it go, and sending it to the universe for healing. Allow it all to come out of every cell of your body and all of these organs. All of that trapped. Everything that's trapped in there, pull it out. <clears throat> and tell me when I have it all. Okay. All right. So I'm going to send that to the universe. What would you like to put instead in its place now that we have clean uh, organs without all that trapped energy? I have to put pink light in there. Let's put lots of pink light in there. Feel that pink light coming in from the universe. Feel it coming in like a fire hose filling up all those spaces. Every bit of your being. Fill it up with that beautiful pink light. And I'm going to touch your forehead and let's seal that pink light in, allowing it to continue, illuminating it, going through every cell, and healing it. And tell me if there's anything else that you find in her body, or is she doing okay now? She feels better. She's Just clean. Mm -hmm. What is there? She... Mm stops herself regenerating. So, if she doesn't want to let go. Mm -hmm. So how can we heal that today? <sighs> Just by acknowledging. All right, very good. Very good. Do you have a message for humanity? <sighs> Be vigilant and strong nothing is written <clears throat> everything can change stay on your path of light keep pushing for knowledge keep seeking the truth and the more that you seek the truth the more that will be given to everyone be patient with those who don't want it and respect their journey but don't let that dissuade you from your path very good do you have a final message for Amanda just love yourself more cut yourself some slack Stop beating up on yourself and just let go and have fun. Enjoy the journey. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Be today. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice or message for me today? Just thank you for facilitating and making this time available to Amanda and to everyone. Your videos are so important and they reach so many more than you know. You're touching so many lives and changing so much. It's so beautiful. I see all the colors. You're changing their vibrations, their frequency. And the time is 4.44. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> so I'd like to thank the Higher Self for all the information it's given Amanda today. <sighs> and Amanda, I want you to go ahead and put yourself back into that beautiful cocoon of golden light, tailoring yourself back to Mother Earth, because we're ready to come back now. 
And while you enjoy that beautiful sensation, I'm going to count from one to five. And with each number, you'll be waking up more and more. And when I get to number five, you'll wake up with complete control of your mind and your body. Very happy about this experience, knowing that you are always divinely guided. One, beginning to wake up now. Two, feeling peace and love. You'll remember everything you need to remember for your well-being. And everything that you remember will be relived with infinite love understanding that this is part of your process. Three, tonight and each night when you go to sleep and put your head on that pillow, you will sleep soundly and deeply until the next day, until the normal working time. Your dreams will be pleasant and healing. And every day you'll be waking up with more and more sensation of happiness and well-being. Four, you feel light as a feather. You're feeling wonderful all over. You feel as if each cell, each nerve, each part of your being is being filled with love, energy, and vitality. You feel as if cool spring water has just splashed over your face and your eyes. Five, wide awake now. Wide awake feeling wonderful all over. Welcome back. Thank you. How do you feel? <clears throat> Grief. Generalized, refreshed, yeah, <laughs> rejuvenated. Here's some shungite for you to hold oh, around thank yourself. You. Thank you. So, you're all full of stones. Let me take those from <laughs> you. So, what do you remember? I remember all of it. Mm -hmm. How did it feel? Peaceful. Yeah. So much more clarity. You know, it's interesting because when I did my healing ceremony on Friday mm -hmm. with the Indian, mm -hmm. Angelo, he made me look in his eyes and it was funny because I saw the reptilian in him and which made it's within me it's with it's within all of us yes mm -hmm. so I saw more of that mm -hmm. compassion mm -hmm. and blending and seeing oh we're just playing roles we're just playing yes. mm -hmm. we're just yeah. playing it's amazing so you want to share this um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take out some personal parts of this. You see a lot more than what you say. Yeah. Because it's too much. Well, it's, it's happening so fast. Yeah. So much. You're fantastic. Mind. You did a great job. Oh, <laughs> so now you're a veteran. <laughs> How do you feel? Good? Your body? Oh, ready to tackle the world. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So how are you feeling? <sighs> it feels like a whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> It feels good. I feel so, so much clarity. So uh, this was a really beautiful session. Oh, I mean, you were, you. It, it just flowed very beautifully. You were connected so well. Yeah. I had like, I wanted to say almost a hundred times more than I was saying. Like so I, explain to everybody how that is, because many people think, oh, well, she's hesitating. She's not really saying much. What does it feel like to be in hypnosis and see all these things coming at you? There's so much coming at once. So mm -hmm. it's hard to, and then it's almost like English or the human word doesn't have enough to express it. Yeah. So I would have to try to find words to use to even say what I, I mean I couldn't even say everything I was seeing I was seeing so much so fast so intensely mm -hmm. that it was hard and then I wouldn't want to miss step I guess or miss misinterpret yeah maybe? misinterpret misspeak or distort what I was seeing so are you getting things like in chunks of of information because you're not really getting words you're trying to interpret these yeah things. it's like playing on a screen so for you it was actually playing on a screen yeah and I could see a lot of things at once and I could see, especially with, like, I think it's so essential to understand that we don't really understand what's going on. <laughs> like, I don't know how to mean that. Like, It's understand, understand that we don't understand. Right. Like we misinterpret, we yes. create in our mind how we see it to be. And, and it's not. And it's, it's just not, it's just not that. And I think I have so much greater clarity yeah. of the, the, the darkness, the darkness and the light. And, and it really is one. And it is yeah. the catalyst is for our benefit and our yeah. soul's growth. Um, and you know they mess with us they play and they laugh and then on the other side we all laugh together oh you mm -hmm. got me mm -hmm. <laughs> that was good when you were saying that about the the light and the dark i was i was thinking about how someone would paint a face you have to have light and dark it's almost like um 
like a labyrinth or uh, like but it would be circular and every other line would but they would connect so the light would connect with the in the dark would, yes but they interchange yes. yeah like, yeah <laughs> it's interesting so how did it feel to be in hypnosis what did it feel like because um, you meditate a lot Right? Well, or not? I, I, or you I channel. do and I don't. You I channel. channel. You channel. I channel. Okay, so time. explain to everybody what what channeling is to you. Channeling to me is bringing in higher wisdom and information without necessarily receiving it in a book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I I get downloads. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it confirms something I've read, or sometimes I read something that confirms a download that I get. Mm -hmm. So was the session like a channeling session for you? Or yeah. a little bit differently? Um, it was a little bit different because I was guided, and mm -hmm. it wasn't just me. And um, I want to say that so I could feel that battle of sometimes the ego wanting to come in, and, and I'm like, oh, go back, go back. To so what did, you do? what did go you do? What did you do? Back to his voice. Okay. So I went back to you, and tried to, and like especially in the beginning, like a million things were flooding <laughs> me. But I we did where I turned all those thoughts into butterflies, mm -hmm. and then I just let them fly away. Wonderful. And then I Wonderful. instantly was because I could think of the billion things I have to do after this or that are going on <laughs> with my life while I'm not part of it and right. that was distracting yeah. me so yeah. off the butterflies went and do you feel that when someone channels there could be some interference um, there can always be interference mm -hmm. in the signal that you're receiving mm -hmm. so always seek to have your highest connection yeah yeah Okay. And that's what I do here, uh, you know, and, and that's why I like to do the interviews afterwards because when I am doing a session, I'm channeling. I am receiving information. I am not, I'm, I put myself in a very, very relaxed state with my client when I first start these videos, you know, with sessions. And I put myself in the most relaxed state with them. So I am receiving all of the information, all of the thoughts of what I'm actually asking. So when I'm asking a question, this thought just comes to me. It, it, it's not something right. that is in my in my mind. It's something that just comes through me. So that is why I find that the best question to ask and everything because I just allow it to come out. That's right. how I'm guided. Yeah. And when we were clearing my throat, it's really just allowing it and mm -hmm. not holding. I hold fear with my words. Yeah. I do, because I really can ruffle feathers. So what would you tell other people about that? Um, I So while I was doing that clearing, I just was praying that it comes out with more grace and ease yeah. and that it comes gentle for people. And, and that's something we can create with our intentions. Exactly. And that's, I was putting new intentions into that space, not coming out with harshness, but mm -hmm. so that people can receive it. Kindness. And, and kindness, kindness and compassion. You can say something to somebody, uh, be very honest, but you can do it with kindness. You can, mm -hmm. you, can, you can say things in a very kind way. You don't have to yell. You don't have to be... Oh, you probably won't. They won't listen to you if you yell. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and we're talking about your children and, and yeah. spouses and things like that. So, yeah. But even someone you're annoyed with. I, I That's think right. if you speak with kindness, they're far more... Receptive. Able, yeah. And we also talked about water. I'm looking at your water bottle right yeah. there. And we talked about water, how you could just put the word love on a water bottle, you could change it. Uh, if you look up Dr. Emoto, mm -hmm. uh, he's no longer with us on this plane, but uh, Dr. Emoto did a lot of um, research on how words affected water. And we are water. So a lot of the words you use about yourself really affect your whole outcome in, in, in your life, how, you, how your health is and how your uh, abilities to do things. It's how you talk with yourself. So well, even your thoughts. Yeah. Because we're, what came to mind while you're saying that we're electrical beings. Of course. Moving through water. Exactly. So it, it, it isn't just, yeah, just our words. It's our thoughts. It's our thoughts. And how we feel about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and that's a direct reflection of the wellness of our body. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So do you recommend this for others? I highly recommend this for others. And yeah. I would love to become a practitioner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm halfway there. I kind of feel like I almost do that when I, I do um, uh -huh. like helping people find the lost emotions in the body. 
Oh, wonderful. So. Wonderful. Now, we are in Los Angeles right now, and um, this happened to be one of those miracle things that I had a change in schedule due to a hurricane, and I had to uh, take a flight out from L.A. rather than out of Houston, and I rescheduled it, and you were here. I, I just, the synchronicity of this yes. is just, yeah. and the fact that in the building while we're here, they're having a 99999 meeting. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it, everything works beautifully. Amanda was scheduled way into 2008 in Miami. No, and, 2018. Oh, 2018. I'm sorry. I'm in a different decade. I mean, 2018. I'll go back, but. <laughs> different. Uh, so things got shifted. So, you know, just because you're trying to do things, it doesn't always work out. The way you think it should be. It, it's if you let it go, if you let it flow, things will work a lot better. So thank you for watching, and I hope you got as much as I got out of it. I know you got a lot more, but if you would like to uh, schedule a session with me, go to albaweinman.com. Uh, you can write to me there for more information and I do travel all over the place and if you would like to know where I'm going to go to next sign up for my newsletter on the out of town page and as soon as you receive a newsletter it comes out like once a month it'll tell you where I'm going to next and sign up really fast they go like immediately uh -huh. so thank you for watching and I hope to see you sometime soon bye thank you thank you That's what I, love. I want uh...